What you believe about healing makes all the difference. It's the difference between recognizing your healing or not. Stay tuned as we uncover the truth about what it is to believe. Thank you for landing on my channel. For the best teachings on divine healing, click the subscribe button, hit the bell, so you're notified when I post new content every Wednesday, every week. The word believe is the first step in the formula. Believe, expect, and you recognize your healing. But what does that word really mean? And what should we believe? Hi, I'm Tony Myers. I was healed from ALS, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. I am an author of four books on divine healing and have led thousands to their healing. And with just a few tweaks in our beliefs, you can be next. Having a vague understanding of words does not help us. Take the word believe. What does it really mean? We will say, I believe, and in the same sentence, then question that. I believe I'm healed, but I still have symptoms. We just question the definition of what to believe is. To believe means to take a, a fact as an unquestionable truth. Which means what? It means we don't question it. Let's take a look at the lunatic boy. The, the boy's father brings the boy to the disciples. Now at this point, he is taking it as an unquestionable fact that the disciples can heal the boy. He's not questioning it. Then the disciples try to heal the boy. Then what happens is the disciples seize the boy, foaming at the mouth, wreathing back and forth. Now based on that, they fall into unbelief because they just questioned the fact that they could heal the boy. That is what happens. Now, Jesus comes down from the mount. The boy's father approaches Jesus. And Jesus, what's going on? And the boy's father says, Your disciples couldn't heal my son. Can you? And Jesus says, What do you mean, can I? If you only believe then nothing is impossible for you. Then what happens? The boy's father now says, I believe, help my unbelief. And also, let me mention, prior to this, the disciples had seen everyone healed. They generally believed in healing. But based on what they saw with their eyes on this circumstance, they fell into unbelief. They saw the boy foaming at the mouth. Then they questioned. Then because of that, the boy's father questioned. And then here comes Jesus. Now the boy's father is wondering and questioning the un what had been unquestionable fact 
that his son would be healed. Now he's questioning it to the point of asking Jesus, can you heal my son? Jesus' response. And then, because of Jesus' response, the boy's father is now, once again, not questioning the fact his son is healed. Look at this. The same thing the disciples saw, Jesus sees and worse. And so does a boy's father. The boy starts wreathing around, foaming at the mouth, and then drops dead. What's the difference? The boy's father is no longer questioning the unquestionable fact that his son is healed. That makes all the difference. He is no longer basing it off of what he sees. He's basing it off of the truth that Jesus spoke. This turns the whole situation around. The boy is then healed. So I want you to notice that generally believing in healing wasn't enough. The, the disciples had seen people healed. Yet for this specific situation, they paid attention to the physical circumstances with their eyes. So they questioned whether they had the authority to heal the boy or not. And this is what happens to us. Now, Curry Blake of JGLM, John G. Lake Ministries, in the DHTs, Divine Healing Techniques, uh, he teaches on the wrong beliefs. Many, many, many of the wrong beliefs. We are going to discuss what to believe. But first, what is one thing that causes us to question that we are healed? Write it down in the comments section. This should be an easy one. In order to recognize that we are healed, we must believe that we have already received our healing. So we have to take the unquestionable fact that by his stripes we were healed, and stop questioning it. Now, let me make this point. In doing so, we get rid of so many false beliefs. Because if I've already received my healing, then what can stop it? Nothing. So, God's timing? It was when he gave us his son. That was God's timing 2,000 years ago. God's will for us to be healed. Once again, and Jesus being sacrificed on the cross, it shows his will that we be healed. And nearly every other wrong belief is canceled out when we take as an unquestionable fact that by his stripes we were healed. Now, how do we overcome the physical symptoms? How can we say by his stripes we were healed if we're feeling symptoms? I want you, once again, we're looking at the lunatic boy, the father, and Jesus. Once the father quit looking at the way his son was acting, then what happened? He was able to recognize that his son was healed. So we quit looking at the symptoms. How do we do that? Stop questioning the fact 
that by his stripes we were healed. Believing that you have received, you shall have it. I love it how it always comes right back to that. But let's move on. There's another way to look at it. When Jesus said, I go to the Father, that was so huge. Behold, I send the Comforter. Behold, I send the Holy Spirit, because I go to the Father. The biggest gift that the Father and the Son have given us is the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon all flesh on the day of Pentecost. This is huge. Since we are now temples of the Holy Spirit, by receiving the Holy Spirit, we have received our healing. So now it becomes an unquestionable fact. I have the Holy Spirit, therefore I am healed, so now there has to be recognizable improvement. Now we have only to recognize this, that the gift of the Holy Spirit covers it all, including our healing. He is living inside of us. He is giving life to our bodies. Therefore, by his stripes we were healed. Do you see how this works? This is how, no matter the circumstance, I can say that I take it as an unquestionable fact I am healed. Therefore, since the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is housed within us, which is the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the embodiment of the kingdom of God within us. Now, there is nothing that can stop or block, hinder our healing, except if we question that fact. That is why and this gets a little deep, but that is why when we think something can resist our healing, we are in unbelief because we're questioning an unquestionable fact. Next week, we are going to get into how to overcome this, this thinking. What empowers our faith? One, the correct belief. Here's the correct belief. I am healed by Christ. That settles it. Period. There is nothing that can stop it, block it, delay it. There is no more delays. Jesus finished it on the cross. All we have to do is come into agreement with that. So we quit looking at what we see with our eyes. So we believe that we have received. Now we can recognize it. In the description section, I provided a link for a free chapter to my book, Divine Healing, DIY. Take advantage of it. This will cement this in. Thank you, Jesus. Also, if you like what you hear, please like it, a big old thumbs up, click the subscription button, and hit the bell so you will be notified whenever I post new content. Now that we have the right belief, which is nothing can stop or block or delay our healing. We have that belief now. How do we empower our faith? We have the right belief. Now, what 
What's the next part of the formula? It is hope. Expectation. We will talk about that next week. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Thank you.